All right, hey everyone. Uh, this week we're gonna be talking about bacteria. Um, so I wanted to go over the answers for last week's lab. Make sure you make these corrections into your lab exercises. Uh, I will try to grade those as quickly as possible and get them back to you as quickly as possible. Um, so for the answers, how many taxa were present? There were nine. Again, those are the names at the top. How many branches are there? 16. So internodes as well as branches, even these guys up here. So you should be able to count 16 from there. Eight nodes in total. Those are all of the connection points, the vertices. Same thing. That's the same amount uh, of clades. There are also eight clades. Uh, for this one, it was microciona was the answer more closely related to mycal than the substrates is. So for this one, these taxa were sister to those two taxa. You'll see here, um, if we locate those two taxa on the tree, um, they are back this way. So um, these two, all of these would be sister. These two would not be. So that's the list there. And do they form a monophyletic group? No, those three taxa. So if we go back, um, these three taxa here, you would be cutting through branches. If you locate the node, you would be cutting through branches if you tried to circle around it. If you included these two, then it would be monophyletic. Uh, but right now it's paraphyletic. Okay, so there are 17 branches on this tree. Um, that was if you counted uh, just these segments here. So one whole corner, like from here to here, stop here, stop here, stop, right? Um, so that's 17 branches in total. Uh, so, oh, oh, how many taxa? Sorry, 17 taxa here. My bad, I was reading the wrong thing. So there are 17 names here. For branches, there are 32, and that's what the um, the lab manual key says. Um, so if you counted, it, it don't stress too much about counting the branches. Um, if you counted the way I told you in the video, you would have gotten 32 because that's what the lab key says and that's what it's always said. Um, but the ebook says to count this way. Um, so that's probably the most updated way. So I would just count like that if you're trying to actually count. They will not ask you on an exam though how many branches there are. So um, 32 branches, 16 nodes or vertices, 16 clades as well. Uh, Clerodendrum was more, or speciosum was more related to uh, japonicum. If we go back, um, we'll see, so speciosum here is on the same uh, node, shares a node with japonicum. Buchania is down here on a separate node. I think that was the other option. Um, these were the taxa that were sister to those two, and they do, these two do form a monophyletic group. So for these, um, you would have circled, um, or you would have written that a monophyletic group is recent common ancestor, all of the descendants, right? Uh, these are the nodes that you should have circled, the most concise ones. Uh, these, so animal, fungi, and plants are monophyletic, prokaryotes and protists are not. So you'll notice here, um, if you tried to make a circle around it, you'd be cutting through this branch. Uh, same for protists, you cannot, you'd be cutting through this branch here, so it is not monophyletic. But all these others, you can locate the node, make a perfect circle around them, right? Same for plants here. Okay. And... Fungi are more closely related to animals. They share a node with each other. Um, plants are way down here on a separate node. So this is the tree that you should have drawn in some form. Um, if you drew yours a little bit differently or used a bracketed tree uh, to draw it, that's totally fine too. Just make sure you know you have things like salamander and frog sharing a node here. Um, bird and alligator should be sharing a node there as well and fish should be off to itself. So three branches of life, bacteria, archaea, and eukarya. 1.4 billion years ago uh, was how recently the humans and bananas shared a common ancestor. Animals evolved in metazoa about 820 million years ago. 
Chimps are more closely related to humans, branching off at about 6 million years ago. And there are three major groups of sponges. I know that that program zooms in and out pretty horribly, um, but these are the three I need you to have. And these are what we're going to talk about when we do get to the animal uh, side of this class. So for these, um, F was 3.5 billion years ago. Uh, this occurred 300 million years ago. So that's the last time the T-Rex and humans shared an ancestor. Um, some traits that are shared between these species. These are some traits that you could have listed from the website. Jellyfish is more closely related to a human that branched off at about 810 million years ago. And humans are more closely related to snakes branched off at about 300 million years ago. So we do have a species spotlight project and I wanted to show you uh, basically the, the requirements of this project. You will be required to work in a group um, as well as individually in order to complete this project. So um, as a group, you're going to be able to or you're going to select a scientific article from a peer reviewed journal and submit it on Canvas. Individually, you're going to write the beginning of a paper, uh, which is going to be four to five sentences, which summarizes that article that your group found. That's also going to be submitted on Canvas. As a group, you're going to be creating a Adobe Spark web page. Um, you'll submit the link under assignments and that will be your final project uh, as a group. Now, individually, you'll go back to that three, uh, that little paragraph, the four to five sentences, and you're going to write an entire paper. It's just one page, single spaced, 12 point font about it's, it's summarizing that paper that you wrote. Or, or that paper that you found, right? And you're gonna also submit that on Canvas. Now, um, you're gonna choose a group, okay? And I'll show you more details in a moment. But for example, if you were to choose the spermatophytes group, then you could choose a specific species that belongs to that, that phylum, that group. For example, agave tequiliana, right? And then you would go and find a scientific paper on that species and then write a summary about it. Does that make sense? You will always be citing the different, uh, all, all your sources. You're, you should only have one source for this entire project. Um, and it's that paper that you found, but you're going to use APA citation. Okay. And make sure you always include an in-text citation. So now uh, on Canvas, I'd like to show you. So this is what student view looks like for you or what it should be. This week, I need you to click on this uh, and sign up for one of these groups. Right now, we're in the beginning stages, so you will have the option to edit this page. You're going to click the edit button here. Type your first and last name in any of these that you, you think you would enjoy writing about. Um, and then you're going to need to do that by Sunday the 21st. If you want some contact information to contact your group members and get started on this project, you can click on that and everyone's email is there. I highly advise setting up Zoom meetings or group meetings on your own time. Um, I'm not a part of that process. If for any reason your group members are not willing to participate or contact you or just unresponsive, contact me immediately. This is very important. Um, it determines your grade basically and their grade as well. So if you don't hear from your group members, of course, give them some time. But if you don't hear from them, please contact me as soon as possible. So um, this is the sign up page. OK, now if we go back to the home page again, you'll see more detailed instructions on this project. So you're going to choose a species. You can click here to go back to that contact page. Um, you're going to meet via Zoom, talk about it, find an article of your choice. You're going to submit that article to me uh, on Canvas, okay? So you're going to submit that. You're going to click there to submit it. We have not decided a date that you're going to need to submit that article by, but you can go ahead and get started thinking about what kind of article you want. Uh, so I think that's the hardest part of the project is finding an article. Then you're going to write that summary paragraph on your own. Everyone's going to have a different paragraph. Obviously, the writing's going to be super similar because you're all summarizing the same article in your group. So this is going to be a head start. 
then you're going to work together to create an Adobe Spark page. You can click here for all of the requirements on that page and for the rest of the assignment. Okay, it has all the details there. These are some example pages. So these are some students that created a page last semester. Um, here's one on a jellyfish, I believe. Uh, so me personally, I don't like this font. I can't read it very well. Um, I mean, it is like cursive and nice, but it's not as professional as I'd like. Um, this is great though. They have an introduction paragraph here, uh, niche and habitat, all their taxonomies listed. Um, nice images with links to those images, conservation bit, you know, at least three pictures, some videos, and their citations, okay, for all of that information that they might have added. Now the paper is going to be a little different. Um, if we go back to that page, we can click on another example. So here, see I like this because it's pretty clear. This is, you know, what the assignment was for, their names, introduction, nice image, some taxonomy all listed out, niche and habitat. This probably could have been um, in a different font, kind of like this font here, make it match. Um, but all of your group members will be responsible for different parts and you're supposed to divvy out those parts uh, as you see fit. So make sure everyone has an equal part of the pay of the, the website. Um, so for the grading rubric for the entire project, this is how I'm going to grade you. So the website has these different parts. So for example, if you have four members in your group, one of you could write the introduction, one of you, and that same person could find a video and an image, right? Someone else could be responsible for taxonomy. That's really easy. You just pull that off of Wikipedia, right? That person could also find images, write captions, you know, maybe help out with another section. A second person could focus on niche and habitat um, on its own, you know, or, you know, avid video. What I don't want is, you know, one person writing introduction, taxonomy, and niche and habitat, and then another person just finding videos and images, right? That's just not fair to the group. So you need to make sure you divvy out those things appropriately. For the paper, I want you to be able to summarize the introduction, methods, results, and discussion of the scientific paper that your group chose. So that's the one page that you're writing individually. Okay. So now we can minimize this. Um, all the dates again are here. All the links to the assignments are here. These aren't open yet, likely. Um, I won't open these until we figure out dates for each of these things. If you have any questions, just contact me, um, but please try reading through all this stuff before uh, you contact me, because I know I, I worked really hard on writing these and trying to make the, uh, the instructions super concise. Okay, so now we will get to the material. So if you remember from, you know, introductory biology, um, maybe some differences between prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Well, prokaryotes are our bacteria, right? These are our single celled organisms. Uh, they do not have a nucleus or any membrane bound organelles, but our eukaryotes do. Um, our eukaryotes are things like plants, animals, fungi, right? Uh, we could have things like chloroplasts, those are found in our plants, and we could have, you know, mitochondria, all these other membrane-bound organelles. Of course, we have a nucleus as well that contains our DNA, um, and these guys uh, could be autotrophic or heterotrophic, right? Uh, we do have some prokaryotes that are autotrophic, um, and they, you know, are photosynthetic, they're going to have that chloroplast. So, for example, cyanobacteria that we'll talk about more later. So, basic anatomy and morphology of a bacteria. Well, we have um, these cell walls that are filled with layers of peptidoglycan. Uh, basically, that's going to be really important depending on whether the bacteria is gram-negative or gram-positive. Um, we have flagella and pili for movement. Uh, we can also use these things for reproduction as well. 
Um, on this last page here, here's a flagellum, may be familiar to you. Um, also, the DNA in bacteria are circular and they're called plasmids. So as opposed to DNA that's kind of um, more coiled up uh, in a eukaryotic cell, we also have some photosynthetic bacteria and they're always going to have chlorophyll as their pigment in order to photosynthesize. Here on the right side, you'll see different types of ways that bacteria can form um, in colonies. So they can just be little circles. Um, they could be filamentous, irregular shaped, etc. This is from uh, elevation. So looking at uh, bacteria from its side kind of horizontally. And then this is the shape like on the outside, the margin of the bacteria. So these are all the different types of shapes. So this will just help you describe the results from this lab activity. So major shapes of bacteria that I want you to know, uh, you need to commit these to memory. So cocci, which are gonna be circles, bacilli, these are generally rods. We have vibrio that are kind of rod shaped but have that flagellum. And then we have spirilli, which are spiral shaped, pretty easy to remember. Um, the things that are spiral shaped are the spirochetes, which is a whole group that we're gonna learn about. We also have different, oops, sorry. We also have different ways that bacteria can uh, transfer genetic material, for example, DNA. So in transformation, uh, these are all methods of horizontal gene transfer. So in the transformation, uh, bacteria just get close to each other and they're able to uptake or distribute DNA as they see fit. Transduction, that's when a bacteriophage comes along um, and injects DNA into the bacterium. And then conjugation is when we have a bridge built between uh, bacteria. So they have cell to cell contact and they're able to transfer DNA that way. So these are the four different file, uh, divisions of um, bacteria that we're gonna talk about. Uh, we have spirochetes, actinobacteria, cyanobacteria, which is arguably the best group, and then proteobacteria. So spirochetes are gonna be modal bacteria. They're corkscrew shaped. Um, some of them live in marine or freshwater. Lots of these guys cause diseases and we have a variety of relationships. They could be, you know, something from where neither of the organisms benefit or, um, or, you know, are harmed, but they are related. They could be parasitic, you know, one of them's harmed, or they could both benefit, which is mutualism. So here is an image. This is an example of something you would see on a practical exam. Uh, the red or the purple dots or circles in the background, those are red blood cells. And then we have these squiggly lines. Those are our spirochetes. That's the bacteria in uh, question. Okay. We also have actinobacteria. So under a microscope, after you do a gram stain, actinobacteria appear purple. So they have thick layers of peptidoglycan. Lots of these guys live in the soil. Um, we use these to create antibiotics, etc. Then we have cyanobacteria, um, the best group. So you'll need to know that these bacteria have chlorophyll A in order to photosynthesize. They look like this. You'll notice that we have a larger cell here. You'll need to know that that's called a heterocyst. The point of that cell is to fix nitrogen, okay? So it takes nitrogen, atmospheric nitrogen, and makes it bioavailable to nearby organisms. These cyanobacteria also contributed to Earth's early atmosphere, uh, contributed a lot of oxygen to that atmosphere. And then, um, so we have the heterocyst here, and then the other cells that are next to it, the smaller or like regular size cells, those are just uh, vegetative cells, uh, those are, you know, photosynthetic cells, okay? So a very important relationship that you'll have to be able to describe. So we have what's called the Azola fern, which is on the right side, and then we have the Anabena cyanobacterium. So this is a mutualistic relationship. Uh, the cyanobacterium fixes nitrogen using its little heterocyst, and makes that atmospheric nitrogen bioavailable for the azola fern. 
in return, the fern provides a habitat or a microenvironment for the cyanobacteria. So make sure you know this because it will be an exam question on the first practical. Proteobacteria, um, these guys, after we do a gram stain, they have what are thin uh, layers of peptidoglycan in their cell walls. So they're termed gram negative because they retain a pink color after the stain. So um, a lot of these guys, for example, Salmonella, Vibrio, Bartonella, these are just uh, different genera of, well, and species here, of um, these proteobacteria. So we have different types of selective media. Basically what selective media is, is it inhibits the growth of other bacteria and allows only certain bacteria to grow. So if we have mannitol salt auger, for example, you're going to uh, experience staphylococcus growth only if you have any growth on the, on the plate at all. So um, another example of selective media would be McConkie auger. So say you went and swabbed a toilet seat and you saw some bacteria grow, you know for a fact that those are E. coli, okay? And then we have TCBS agar, um, agar, which is thiosulfate citrate, uh, thiosulfate citrate bile sucrose agar. Um, it only selects for Vibrio, which causes uh, gastrointestinal diseases um, if you eat undercooked seafood. So if you have, uh, you know, a swab of salt water and you plate that on a TCBS plate and you do see growth, then you know it's Vibrio. The reason why this is yellow is because this is also differential uh, media. It allows you to differentiate different species on the same plate by looking at a color change. So now you're gonna complete the lab exercises. Um, so part one just involves you going on uh, Canvas. So you'll go to the home page. Um, the easiest way to do this is go to assignments and then click lab to submission. So supplemental information here, you can click here. It'll help you answer those questions. Um, you can go back now, uh, try to answer the other questions using the PowerPoint and the lecture that I just provided. And then for part three, you need to choose a, a group. So I'm going to show you um, if I were to open up the lab manual for lab two, I'm going to pull it over here. So um, for this part here, okay, part three, you'll notice all these different groups. I need you to pick one group. So fresh water or salt water or soil or surfaces or skin or air. Now, our lab TAs have already done this for you. So if you're on this assignment page and you click choose a group, it should take you to this page. If it doesn't, let me know. Um, but for fresh water, for example, uh, you have two sources that our TAs have swabbed for you. So you either would, you would make a hypothesis based on both of these sources if you chose this group. Other groups include soil from a ficus tree or soil from the clock tower. Um, you could choose the surfaces group and we would be swabbing a one card or a cell phone. Um, skin is going to be hands that are washed versus... Uh, or that are washed versus not washed, an air vent or coughing from a distance, right? So you'd choose one of those groups. Then what you need to do is go to our discussion board. So I need you to answer uh, question eight, which is on the lab manual here. So if you scroll down, these answers should be recorded in your exercises. And then question eight, you can leave blank on your exercises, but answer these questions in the discussion board. So you'll click here and you'll see, okay, you chose a group, right? Uh, and then you're gonna choose a source. So if you were um, fresh water, then it's gonna be those two water sources. Then you're gonna write all the hypotheses. Notice how it asks you to write a hypothesis about your group, then write a hypothesis about another group and then compare two groups plates. So you can, compare two different uh, sources if you uh, want. You could compare your own source to another group source. Um, 
so you'll need to go here. You're going to be using this page a lot. So, um, for example, say I was soil group. Um, I'm going to write two hypotheses about what I think would grow on those plates if I were to swab or sample soil from a ficus tree or under the clock tower. Then if I was soil group, I would need to make an observation about another group's plates. So uh, you can just write one hypothesis. I think, you know, more bacteria or this kind of bacteria in particular would grow uh, based on the shoreline that was sampled and then compare two groups plates well. Um, the easiest would always be comparing skin versus, you know, the surfaces. Um, what do you think is going to grow on those two? More or less growth, right? So things like that. Okay, so now um, this is another activity you're going to need to do online. I believe this is part two of lab two. So you'll need to complete this. Next week, uh, make sure you get in your lab two quiz, your lab two exercises, and your hypotheses on the discussion board. Now, you will only ever submit the lab two exercises or any exercises for this class uh, that you wrote and then scanned and uploaded. You're only going to submit those on Canvas, never on Hayden McNeil. The only thing you're completing on Hayden McNeil is the quizzes, are the quizzes, okay? And you're reading the ebook. All right, so lab two, uh, make sure you complete those hypotheses. If you don't, it's gonna result in a three point deduction from your lab exercises. Remember lab exercises are um, worth eight points. So you need to make sure to do that or else you'll get at best a five on your lab. So thanks so much. Please contact me ever. Um, if for any reason you're having trouble coming to the um, the office hours, just shoot me an email and I'm happy to meet with you. Uh, just let me know. Okay. All right. Take care.